Welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking the time today to join this webinar that we're having around uh, sustainable technical communities funding. I'm Dan York. I'm a member of the Internet Society staff here and the project leader or one of them for this year's uh, project around technical communities. We're going to talk a lot about that and funding, and we're going to first have some different presentations from uh, or, or discussions from Steve Olshansky and Brian Horla Cruz. And then after that, we'll go into a Q&A uh, period and we'll hope to have some good questions from you all and everything else. I would um, invite you while we're getting started to drop something in the chat about you know, where you're from and that kind of thing. It would be very interesting to hear what part of the world you're at or with which group you're with. Uh, this session is being recorded. It is only being recorded in English at the current time. We do, um, we will be offering, we're planning to offer some additional sessions in French and Spanish but this one is in English only. Uh, over in the chat, we have seen the, uh, Gael has dropped in the code of conduct and Steve has also put a couple of links in the product pages there as well. We will also put some links into the funding area page in French and Spanish if you're interested in those pages as well. Um, we would ask you if you wouldn't mind just to hold your, your questions until we get to the Q&A period at the end of this, uh, and then we will be able to do that. Now, I mentioned that this is part of our, our uh, Sustainable Technical Communities Project, where we talk about this. We at the Internet Society believe that local technical communities are the ones that create, sustain, and defend the, uh, the Internet, make it more stronger, more, more resilient, and all of that. We see that whether it's network operator groups or computer security incident response teams, now national research and engineering networks, or many other different types of groups. It could be user groups as well. These are the groups that help make the internet what it is. Some of them actually help in the operations of the internet, some of the network operator groups. Some of them help in the security of it. Some of them help in other different areas around that. We, um, we see these groups as critical, in part because when governments around the world do things like bring in legislation that may have bad impacts on the internet, for instance, when governments go and introduce legislation that may bring back doors for encryption. Oftentimes they don't often know. And so it's very helpful when local groups can be there to help push back and, and help say to the governments, to the regulators, et cetera, that that's not how the internet works or this is how it may have bad effects on the internet in our country or on our economy and pieces like that. So we believe that technical communities in local regions are critical for the internet's success and growth. What we're doing this year is we have a project where we're trying to look at how do we help those groups you know, thrive, become more sustainable, grow stronger. In some cases, we're helping create local groups where there aren't any, bring together people, for instance, from network operators who want to go form their own network operator group. We do this through a couple of different ways. One way is that we offer some training programs and we're encouraging people to take part in those training programs. Another way is that we're working on developing some tools and some, some guides, some things that can help groups grow and, and become stronger in their own ways. And then another major way we're doing that is through providing funding to help technical communities create local events in their region that can bring together members and can help create a stronger local technical community in their area. And that's why we're here today to talk about this part of our work this year, to provide funding to help create and grow more local technical communities so we can build that really movement of people around the world who have a technical understanding of the internet and can help make it grow and defend it against the threats that we see there. So again, I'm Dan York, I'll be the moderator. I'll be coming back to help uh, work with questions at the end. But in the meantime, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Steve Olshansky, to talk a bit about this project in more detail. Thank you, Dan. Um, so I'm Steve Olshansky. I'm based in the US. I'm director of Trust Technology Policy and Strategy here at the Internet Society. And Dan, you covered it really, really well. This is a really um, excellent program that we're really excited about and trying to get money out into the community to extend our reach because in the grand scheme of things, we're a relatively small organization. Um, and we have, as I'm sure you know, members and chapters all around the globe, literally. And so this is an opportunity for us to help support these communities in 
leveraging their expertise and resources to um, represent us and our efforts around the world to protect the internet and defend it and grow it. So I'm sharing my screen. Um, if you haven't already seen the page, I put the link to it in the chat. I think it's really, there's a lot of really good, useful information on there. And we really hope that you will look at this and think about what sort of activities are going on in your region and your communities that might fit this and submit an application, because I think this is a really um, useful program that we're very much hoping that you will utilize. We want to get the money out there into the community. We think it's really important that we uh, support our technical communities around the world toward the goals of the Internet Society. And I don't have a whole lot to say beyond that. Dan, you did an excellent introduction. Um, so perhaps I will turn it over to our colleague, Brian, from the uh, Internet Society Foundation, who's actually running this program. And um, yeah. Actually, do you want to just scroll down and talk about the review process, or is Brian covering that? Um, I can talk about it a little bit, and then Brian yeah. can talk about it. Um, there. Um, so when you submit an application, we review it internally. Uh, this is a joint effort between the foundation staff and the project staff on the Sustainable Technical Communities Project. And we look at it to see that it fits our criteria as described on this page, um, and that it can really effectively do what we needed to do, which is to support a technical community, not just be a one-off event. It's really important that these events uh, sustain and support technical communities around the world. Um, Brian will uh, demonstrate, I believe, how the process works, how the application process works. But on the back end, we look at these very closely with an eye toward, does it meet our criteria? And is this something we can support? A key point you mentioned right up there at the top, though, that people need to be concerned about is the time frame. Ah, thank you. That's really, really important because we need at least eight to 10 weeks in order to complete our process before the event. And so it's important that you plan ahead. We understand that a lot of these things take time. Um, and so please keep that in mind. We need eight to 10 weeks. We may be able to lower that as we go down through the process in coming months or years, but for now, that's the time, that's the uh, advance notice that we need before the event. Thank you. So if you're coming to us with something that's happening next week, looking for our funding, sorry, we're not the right path. <laughs> you know, you yeah. gotta think a little bit farther ahead on that one. So I think uh, with that, I will turn it over to Brian and I'll stop my screen share. Thanks, Steve. So, uh... Hello, everyone. I'm Brian, and I'm a grant specialist at the Internet Society Foundation. Um, I certainly see a number of familiar names uh, in the group today. So if uh, you're from the chapter community in particular, I work um, most notably, I'd say, on the uh, foundation's grant program called Beyond the Net, um, which is our uh, uh, chapter-specific funding program. Uh, I also support our uh, IGF sponsorship initiative as well. Uh, and as of this year, um, I've been playing sort of a supporting role here with the Sustainable Technical Communities Program, uh, and in particular, really helping to operationalize that uh, and run it in, in sort of the same uh, standard way that we're trying to run all of our other grant programs. Um, so that's, yeah, sort of how I fit into the uh, process here. Um, I was going to go ahead and do a walkthrough of what the applications look like uh, in Flux now, which is our uh, standard grants management platform that we use for all our other grant programs. So I know for many of us today, this will be um, quite familiar, but since I know this is a big change from where this funding has been done in the past, I figured I would do a quick walkthrough. Um, so of course, uh, in order to uh, submit an application for any of our programs, it's important to register with the Flux platform. Um, and it's important to note that this uh, particular program, Sustainable Technical Communities, is really open to applications from organizations. Um, so it should be coming from some sort of organization. It can be uh, a public nonprofit, it could be a uh, even a private company, um, but it really just needs to be some sort of organization with a bank account in its own name. 
Um, so when you register that in Flux, um, you would select the option to uh, register as an organization. You put the organization details, and then separately, um, there's a section for you to create your individual account as well. So your individual account will be linked uh, to the organization. Um, when you have subsequent colleagues associated with your group um, also uh, working on these grants, they'll also need to register separately as individuals, and we can link their account to the organization uh, so everyone is together. Uh, so once you create your account and you log in, this is what the Flux platform looks like. This is the home page, um, and you'll want to navigate to the application and grants portal, which you'll see on the left-hand uh, ribbon there. That takes you to this page that has uh, the application details for all our different programs. So sustainable technical communities is towards the bottom of the page. You've got a, a brief description uh, that has sort of the, the key details um, of what is needed, um, as well as what kind of documents uh, would need to be prepared. Um, so some things that we'd be looking for are the organization's registration documents, um, an agenda for this upcoming event, uh, the budget. Uh, we're notably not asking for a work plan, though it still says that. Um, but we're looking for a budget template. Um, and then you can also upload any other supplemental documents. Um, so it's good to have those things ready to go before you actually start filling out the application. Uh, to access the application, you'll click the button that says Apply Now. And then you get our uh, application form here. Uh, so most of it's quite straightforward. I mean, you'll have a, a section to input the organization. These things will mostly populate automatically um, based on the way your organization is registered. Um, there's some spaces for uh, the different contacts associated. Um, so it's important to note the differences here, the primary contact, that'll be the main person that we uh, share correspondence with, with um, giving updates about the grant, or if we have questions about any of the details in the application, uh, it'll normally go to that person first. Um, the signatory is the person who will actually sign a grant agreement once a grant is made, a grant or sponsorship. Uh, and an additional contact is anyone else that you'd like to um, keep, I suppose, in the loop uh, as things move forward with the uh, application process. Um, I would also note that uh, we're looking to see at least two different points of contact uh, for each, uh, each of these applications. We don't really want to see something where we just have uh, the same person for all three points of contact. Um, there's a section where you can uh, input the uh, details about the, well, I guess, explain whether or not the organization has a bank account or not. Um, if you check no, you'll get this message saying that you need to be applying with an organization that has a bank account. Um, so it's important that if you were, say, uh, applying on behalf of a a group that's more informally organized, um, maybe that doesn't have a, a registration, that you're coordinating the funding request uh, through another partner organization uh, that can receive uh, and help manage the funds. Uh, beyond that, so you've got the basic uh, application details, uh, ex um, the title of the event, uh, the budget, we're limited to uh, a maximum of $4,000. Uh, per sponsorship uh, for these these events. So uh, if you do put uh, a request for more than that, uh, just please note that we would only fund a maximum of $4,000. Uh, we have the time frame, uh, the region uh, and country that the event is taking place in, the space to put a description in, um, some space to explain a bit of the background about the organization that is applying, um, a space for details about the history of the event, uh, explaining whether it's uh, something new, whether it's a one-off thing, uh, or whether it's uh, an event that's happened uh, with some frequency in the past and is part of a series. Um, and then we also like to usually know if an event is uh, being done in coordination with an ISOC chapter. So some space to add that. Something that is newer for all our programs this year is the indicators and measurement section. Um, so I'll just pause here for a bit um, to point out that this is really something we've been uh, doing at the foundation to try and better track the impact of the different things that we're funding. 
Um, so making sure we're tying some kind of um, outcome or measurable outputs that are associated um, with all the different uh, projects that we sponsor. So with these, you need to select a minimum of one uh, and a maximum of three different indicators you wish to track. Um, so for example, if you check any one of these, you'll get a new section that pops up um, to further elaborate on that specific indicator. So if we're looking at the indicator for the number of people who participate in the event, we'll want to list a target. So say I'm uh, putting on an event, we want to have 100 people attend. That would be the participation uh, goal that we're looking at. Then we also want to see how that's going to be measured. Uh, so this can be done by maybe a survey of who, who ends up uh, showing up, uh, or you could select something like other, or you can input like the sign-in sheet for an event, um, just some way of showing that uh, the organization is tracking the data associated um, with that specific uh, indicator. And then we have this last part here, which is showing which program objective the indicator aligns to. So when we're saying program indicator, um, that's referring back to the, sorry, program objective, that's referring back to the uh, sort of high level uh, programmatic goals we have for each specific program. Uh, and those are listed on the uh, program uh, webpage um, that we were sharing in the beginning of this session. Um, so if you have this drop down menu, you can see um, all those different uh, program objectives, and you would just choose the one that is most closely aligned with uh, the indicator you chose. So that's showing really the alignment um, of the event with the programmatic goals for the Sustainable Technical Communities Program. That's the idea there. Um, here, then, we have funding information. Um, so you can tell us if you've got uh, additional sponsors who are providing funds for the event. Um, if you select yes, you'll have a box pop up. Uh, and you can fill that out with any pertinent details. If you select no, it stays blank. Um, and then there's also a section where you can detail any past funding um, that you've had from uh, Internet Society uh, or the ASOC Foundation, um, if that is necessary. And then towards the bottom, uh, we have these two red boxes. So there's one for the project budget, um, and then there's one for the uh, agenda for the event. Uh, and these things you can uh, upload by just clicking the green plus sign on the right-hand side and then selecting add file. And then you can upload things directly from your computer. Um, and I will quickly show you what the specific budget template looks like as well. Um, and it's important to note also that um, you will not be able to submit the application unless you actually click the uh, plus sign button and upload these documents because um, they're a required part of the application. So I will stop there. Brian, I'll note too that people can, you can go in there and work on that and you can save it. You don't have to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. You can go in there and fill out that information and you can come back and upload the documents as well. Yeah, that's correct. So yeah, just make sure to, to click the save button periodically as well though. I do believe the system times out Maybe if you're inactive for 10 minutes or so, but yeah, a lot of folks can take a couple of days to put everything together. That's perfectly all right. Um, let me share the budget template as well. All right, can we see this now too? Yep, we do. Yep, so this is what would be the required uh, budget template to be uploaded with the application. Uh, this is the foundation's uh, standard template. Uh, most of our programs use the same one right now. Um, and it's fairly straightforward. Um, you've got these different uh, cost categories, personnel, contractual, equipment, travel, subawards, other direct costs, and indirect costs. And uh, if you, say, have certain expenses you're unsure uh, what cast category it fits in. We do have a handy document that's linked to this. Um, you see this purple text that says budget preparation guidance from the ESOC Foundation. Um, that's a document of maybe 15 pages or so that 
goes into details of what can uh, fall in these categories. Uh, I've also created this fairly handy uh, example uh, showing how this should be filled out. Um, but yeah, you've got space to just kind of put each item, uh, a certain unit, the number of units, the price per unit, and then it, there are formulas embedded in the template, which will automatically uh, calculate the sums for most of these. Um, we also really appreciate when the notes uh, column is used to add extra detail uh, to any sort of uh, expense uh, that you may may need for your project. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve raised a really just a super important part point in the chat, which is that we only actually the budget that you need to put in here is for the amount you're requesting. So, mm -hmm. you know, you may have a, your your whole event may obviously have a much larger budget, but if you're requesting $3,000 to provide, you know, um, publicity and promotion of your event that's going on or to or to help with you know, facilitating audiovisual support, or I, I don't know exactly what you may have for your things. That's you, whatever you're requesting the amount for, that's the part of this that you need to fill in there. So that's the key part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's we don't exactly care right. about the larger, bigger picture of that. We just, we want to see what is the part that you're asking the funds for from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it should not uh, ideally surpass the $4,000 funding ceiling uh, that we can offer. Uh, in any case, if if you happen to submit a larger budget, we'll probably send that back to you uh, and ask for you to highlight some specific items um, that would be funded with the potential uh, sponsorship. So if we have all these things submitted and a sponsorship is made, then this all kind of comes to be important uh, in the end because we also ask for detailed financial reporting. Um, and so that requires um, the, I guess, uh, inclusion of this additional document in the follow-up report that would be uh, requested after the event uh, has been funded and has been carried out successfully. Um, and so here we'll have a uh, this is basically the same uh, report we use for all our different grant programs, and it has a few different tabs. Not all of them are going to be relevant in this case because we also use this template for our projects that maybe last one to two years and have multiple reports being submitted. Um, so basically, we'll want to be doing on this first tab a comparison of the budget uh, that you submitted um, with the application. Uh, so that's column B, where it says award budget. Uh, then we'll skip over column C. That's not relevant for these sponsorships. And just go right to column D that says total expenses for current period. And that's where you'll put the actual, uh, what the actual expenses were at the end of the day. So we'll fill that out on this first tab. And then the second tab, we'll actually ask for a detailed report here. Um, so including things like receipt or invoice numbers, the date that the specific expense was incurred, um, who provided the service or where the goods were procured, um, and then any kind of detailed notes you'd need to add. Um, and we also ask for these to be reported both in the uh, local currency that is used in your respective country uh, and the uh, respective amount in US dollars. So... Yeah, that's what that looks like. There are also um, formulas embedded in these directly. Uh, so it should be adding up for you automatically as you enter all the information. <clears throat> so for the purposes of the sustainable to technical communities sponsorships, we'll just worry about these first two tabs, a summary and a financial uh, detail report. There's this third tab as well, but that's not relevant for this program. That's for some of the uh, larger grants that we make. So, all right. Yeah. Well, so with that, we are, do want to open it for questions. I saw that we had uh, a couple in there. I do, and I see one right there, and it's already been answered. These, what you saw from Brian, those samples are available. You can download them right off the application and be able to get, look at that. Um, Vahan, is that how I said? Right. All right. right. Well. Thank you. 
Uh, thanks for, for launching this very important program because as RIAP and CC, we already support technical community in our service region, uh, especially NOX, IXPs, and, and it will be a great support from ISOC to join us. Uh, I have several questions based on our experience uh, with NOX. Uh, I'm currently, um, let's say, covering mostly Central Asia and Caucasus and we have uh, the NOx popping up uh, very, very soon. Just I've, I reported today at the meeting, internal meeting, that another two uh, two NOx are coming this July and August, and another NOx will come next uh, next year. Uh, there are a number of activities, uh, and we'll need more funding. So the questions um, uh, you have also mentioned that usually this technical community. Uh, has non-formal knocks. So this is not an organization. Uh, sometimes we have the union of operators, for example, or uh, union of uh, telco operators. But in at the most cases, uh, these not network operators groups are non-formal groups. And that is uh, when we struggle with, with the funding. And in some cases, there are some uh, organizations to get this funding. In some cases, there is uh, this problem. So what I would suggest and also ask, if they don't have an organization, you have suggested that there might be another organization to receive funds and participate there, but uh, taking into account very complicated tax issues and also the expenses uh, related to them, it is. Uh, it, it will not work every time, and it it might create problems. So, might it be possible to directly cover their expenses, like directly uh, pay for the translation equipment, broadcasting, hotel fees, fellowships? I don't know. I mean, they can suggest the budget itself, but ISOC, for example, can pay directly for the hotel. It will be. I guess beneficial for all the parts and will save even money for that. Especially it can be also working when somebody from ISOC is participating to this event and he can also check all these uh, invoices and pay uh, himself or herself when he's uh, when this ISOC representative is there. So uh, yeah, so the patient, yeah. Yeah, so that's a challenging question. Um, I mean, we're certainly aware that many, especially NOGs, often are informal. You know, they might be three people who you know start out meeting in a in a in a bar or something, and and you know it goes from there and grows in that kind of space. And that's actually how we'd like to help these organizations grow from that very informal you know sense to to uh, to being you know much more as they go on from there. This particular program cannot do direct funding of that. We need to go through an organization somewhere. So, um, so it, you know, we know in some cases we've had groups that have found a fiscal sponsor of some part who has uh, mm -hmm. supplied on behalf of that organization. So that is that this program is, uh, is for that particular way. Brian, um, did this, you? This, yeah, this is this, uh, in that case, maybe we can say that one of the objectives is to strengthen their institutional capacities and well, let's say make the organization that can yeah yep yep and if you know and, and certainly we expect that we'll help with you know getting some of those organizations you know um up and running potentially through some other yeah. organizations and, and in, in some cases perhaps it might be an internet society chapter that might you know apply on behalf of the local group and, and help that group get going or it might be you know, one of the local, um, you know, other larger association or something associations, like that. Yeah. something like that. I mean, we it could even be a corporate entity or something that was, you know, that was doing it on behalf of the of the group or something like that. But we do need mm -hmm. to work with an organization that can receive funds from a from a U.S. foundation. Yeah, we have another case in our region that one organization is organizing several knocks. Uh, in different countries, but in each country, they have a co-host or co-organizer from local community. So can this organization apply several times for different knocks? Yes. 
Yes, as long as it's clear it's for the different NOGs or different technical communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, another another question is about the let's say branding. So, do you also tell these organizations how to promote ISOC at their events? Should it be called a co-host? Should it be called a sponsor? Uh, well, because in in many countries it can be a different political situation. Maybe ISOC would not like even to be uh, mentioned as a sponsor. Um, Brian or Steve, do you want to take that? Oh, no. I haven't. I don't know that we have specific guidance. Obviously, we'd like some acknowledgement if that's appropriate. Um, but I take your point very well that there are some cases where it might be politically awkward or for any other reason um, to acknowledge ISOC sponsorship. But I think it's good to, to acknowledge it if it's possible, because it, it helps spread the word about the Internet Society and helps people to get curious about us and come learn about us. It's not, not never a bad thing, but I understand that there may be political issues involved. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah OK. Yeah, uh, and to that, I, I might add also that um, we don't necessarily have a, a sponsorship um, sort of uh, a stipulation in the current agreements we're using with these. Um, but it's certainly, yeah, encouraged where, I suppose, where applicable. Um, and of course, we're happy to provide um, shareable copies of the logo uh, that you can use in branding materials as well. Um, so that's available. Yeah. But there's not and a specific they... outright requirement. Not right now, no. Yeah. And they also apply for um, another support from ISO, maybe uh, for, for, for a speaker, because NOCs are also not, not about the money, but also for some institutional support that we can provide them, like speaking at their events. And uh, for example, manners can, can be very well point to provide them or an, another capacity building tools and resources that ISO so has. That certainly we we are glad to help groups with speakers and and to provide that. That again would sort of be outside of this. This program is really looking at what how we can do to help those local technical communities mm -hmm. you know, grow and thrive in different ways. Separately, we're certainly glad to talk to groups about how to provide speakers and to and to see what can be possible there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But shall they have some somewhere a tick box? So that you 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 might know that they are looking for some speaker from ISO. Um, I, we are certainly glad to talk to them. We we don't have that in this particular application. It's good mm -hmm. feedback. We can think about that in some way. But um, but to anybody applying, we're certainly glad to talk to you. And we have regional contacts. We have the people here who can also speak to that, etc. Okay. And the last question, maybe when from this opportunity will be open? I. If we apply, if these organizations- It's open, it's open now. It's open yeah. now. We've uh, already funded a number of groups and uh, have several more uh, that are under consideration at this point. So uh, so we're certainly glad to, it is available now. You can begin, it's a rolling, there's no specific deadline. Uh, we mm -hmm. do have a certain amount of funding that we have. And so, um, you know, at some point we'll we'll uh, put up a deadline or something like that. But at the moment we're we're open, open for business. Come on in. Put your application in, and uh, and we'll be glad to consider that and see that. There is a review process that involves some of our folks internally who review it, as well as an external reviewer, um, people from the foundation as well. So that's part of that eight week period we ask for right now, is because we do want to make sure that we understand what you've submitted, the budget, the pieces, and also go through a review process to make sure that it's there. And all of this is really being done to ensure that we're being transparent with how this money is being used and and what's going on yeah. out there in different forms. Yes, so. one of the hugest problems can be the agenda itself because, you know, the agenda is ready at the very, very late day, sure. the very, very late moment. Yeah. But, but in that it case... It can be general, yeah. Yeah, I, we want a general agenda. What, what's going to be talked about in there? We don't care if it has specific speakers nailed down. I mean, the more you have, the better, great. But, but we want to understand what is it that we're doing? You know, what's going on? In there. Are there other folks with questions? Are there sorry, are there any restrictions for countries or regions? Um, I will have to defer to Brian. Are, do we have any country restrictions? Perhaps OFAC um, issues. Don't believe so. I think we should you know, as long as the organization is registered well and can receive the funds. 
Yeah, I'm not 100% yeah. sure. Uh, we may have to. I, yeah, I'm not sure, for instance, about like Iran, for instance. Um, yeah, sure. Just due to, um, you know, whether it's, I think there's a couple of countries like Iran and North Korea that are on the list of places where U.S. entities cannot fund. Yeah. So if you're not in outside of those countries, everywhere else you're good. As long Thank as we you. can get money to you in some way. All right. Are there other questions? Hi, can I ask a question? I, I don't know how to raise my hand. Uh, sure, go right ahead. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks. Uh, and nice to see you, Brian, finally uh, face to face. Um, Hamid from Somalia. Um, my question is really just very simple. Uh, uh, some of the literature I'm reading, it says for certain projects, you have to have some tax issue like the US, uh, what's the word? Um, something that's similar to that US tax category, um, whereby in Somalia, taxation is an entirely different world. So, is, and then somewhere else I read, if you are a chapter, that's not really necessary. So can you please clarify on that? Can, can we still apply for this and um, without not having that US equivalent tax category? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I think I'll toss that one to you. Yeah, so some of our core programs at the foundation require that. That's it's called 501c3 equivalency to demonstrate that the organization um, is is registered and operating in the same way that a, a U.S. public charity is, um, but that is not required for this program. Um, in the same way, it's not required for like Beyond the Net uh, for chapters. Um, so a few of our programs don't require that. So uh, Sustainable Technical Communities is one of them. Uh, connecting the Unconnected is another one. And I believe our Sustainable Peering program, those don't require 501c3 equivalency. So, so that's that not a requirement for this particular. Not a requirement. Um, chapters are welcome, Internet Society chapters. And for folks who are listening in or don't know, we have around 120, 130 of those around the world at different parts. Uh, you you can apply. Um, it, you, it, we do need to see that it is being used to help facilitate a stronger technical community within your, within your area or region, but you are certainly welcome to apply. Um, and I think we've had a couple of those there. Uh, Hamid, just, Hamid, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Just, just a quick uh, supplementary question. So can, for example, a university or other entity work with the chapter? So in other words, can we say, you know, we're working with this university or yep. some teleco or another, another association? And also, I understand you saying eight weeks lead time. That's fine. But how long can this project continue? Is it six months, one year, two year? Again, keeping a situation like Somalia where things are a little bit fluid. Well, um, I think the intent is it would happen within. Well, Brian, I I don't know if, if what's your what's the outer limit on that. I suppose we don't explicitly have one, but I mean it's event sponsorship at the end of the day. So I'd say generally we're looking at things that are you know for a fixed period, if not a day, maybe a couple of days. I, I think that's what but, we're. Was and we're also ideally, ideally, they're happening within the calendar year in terms of the funding and the pieces that we have. If you had something that was going to stretch on out into the next year or something, we might uh, we might want to have a conversation on that. Other questions? Uh, you should be able to raise your hand out the bottom of the Zoom. There should be a reactions area that has a little hand raising, but. We're also, uh, we can be a little bit less formal here and and um, people can open up as well. I see um, Stefan asks, is there a place where they are listed or can ask to be listed for fiscal sponsors? I, we don't have a list at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if we would want to do that because we could get into a challenge with having that happen all around the world in different ways. But um, interesting, good feedback to have. What else do we have? I see the question has been sort of answered in there about in which month should we plan to host the event? Um, yep, again, we ask for an eight week lead time. We're working on trying to compress that, but we've got to get through this and work our cycles through and, and, and see what we can do. Um, this, this is all the first year we've offered it in this way. 
Um, what else? Oh, I see a question here. Can you provide examples? All right, uh, Steve, do you want to talk? We have already funded several and we have several more in consideration. You want to talk about what some of those are? Um, sure. So I was just looking at the list. The, the ones that we funded so far have been NOGS, which is kind of the, the in the sweet spot of what we're looking to fund. We have several others that are under consideration now, um, but that's so far what we've actually provided funding to. So I think that's a good example of the kind of thing that we're looking to fund. But, you know, it, it's not restricted to that by any means. And uh, what have we what have they requested funding for? What were some examples of that? Um, meeting support, um, renting the venue, um, catering to provide food and beverage, um, in some cases, some limited travel to get people to the event. Um, it just varies a lot, actually. But these are what we've funded so far have been um, pre existing series of NOGs that um, have asked for support for the next in the series. Yep. And we've had a couple of different other applications come in for new events or new, different things. And so we're considering those right now. They're in the queue right now. Uh, is there a maximum number of times an organization can apply for the same funding for the same event? or for the same, or for different events. Uh, you can only apply once for one event. Yes, for different events. Yes, Kyle answered that. We currently have a funding at two per year, um, largely because we want to spread this around as much as we can across the world. The maximum amount of funding is, uh, is $4,000 US. Translate that to your current, your local currency. You can also apply if you only need 2,000, you can apply for that too. You don't have to apply for the 4,000, but that's the most that we can apply. We are able to do at this point. Um, anything else? Any limitation on budget lines in what way? For example, I mean, maybe they shouldn't put everything on salary or they shouldn't put everything on equipment or hardware should not be purchased, et cetera. Well, Brian or, or Steve, if you want to speak to that, I, I think the general thought is we're looking at how do these, whatever it is, how does it help build the local technical community and the group and help it you know, grow and thrive in some way? So if the local group needs you know, catering support for an event to help if that's an area that, that is needed, that's, you know, we can put it all on that, for instance, or if it needs audiovisual equipment, or if you want, if you live in an area that you want to have translation or something like that, um, that's, you, know, you, you can put it all on that if that's what the cost is. There's not a certain speed. I think we'd also factor in as well, there's that space in the application form where you can show that you're receiving other funding from from other sponsors um so you could also clarify okay you know this partner is going to provide uh support for catering we're requesting funding for live streaming support things like that um so that all kind of helps as well uh, to better understand how the event's being organized yeah it is focused on event support so we are looking at these are event sponsorships we're looking to go and do that um, hackathons legit or are NOGs understood to be conferences? I, I think the, uh, we're open to it. I mean, we're trying, if you think a hackathon, for instance, is the, is the event type that will help you grow a strong technical community in a specific area, then submit that. I mean, we're, we're not limited to a specific type of event. It's more of our end goal is, we want to build a movement of people who know about how the internet works and can defend it when you know when we're being pressured by regulators to to suppress the internet. We want to build a movement globally of people who can do that. If if a hackathon is the right place in your area to go and figure out how to go and help make better software to make things more secure, for instance, or to help, you know, if you were doing an installathon on 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 something, we're open to it. We don't have any specific limits. Some of the conferences and meetings and stuff are, are typical 
and that's often where the kind of events we see, but we're open to new events too. Um, what else do we see? I saw a hand pop up from somebody, but then it went away. So I don't know if that was, if the question was answered or anything else. No, that was me just discovering how to use my hand, sorry. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. <laughs> All right, anything else? Any thoughts or comments around this? Bahan? <laughs> I, I see it as quite wide as the scope of support that it, it can be even training. As, as I understand from the description, yeah. And anything that can help to build the community, the capacity for community. It, it is, although the training we would want to be careful. We don't want to just provide training for, you know, everybody in, you know, people in Lagos, Nigeria or something, just because we feel like providing training. We want to provide training to people who are going to be part of the local, um, you know, internet user group in Lagos or something like that. We're, we're aiming at the training if it leads toward building that community to do something. You know, if it's training as part of a NOG event where we were going to do training around, um, well, you mentioned routing security manners. If we were going to do a session that was around that, or we were going to bring in the, uh, you know, some trainers to do a, a course around how to build a community network or something like that. And it's there to help, you know, enhance, build the knowledge of the people in the local community, that kind of training. Awesome. If you just want to do training, like, you know, and how to use the internet or something for the general population of whatever, um, that's not probably what we want to fund. Um, thank you. We have programs with the youth community. Okay. Um, anything else? Steve, Brian, anything else you want to add? Not for me at the moment. Yeah, I think this I is have right. another question, maybe, uh, if possible. Go so, for it. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, it's a bit noisy here. <laughs> if, if you hear that. Uh, well, you have mentioned that it, it is not obligatory to uh, align it with the ISOC chapter or maybe SIG or, or uh, anything. But it can be also helpful if they mention if it is, uh, they have this some cooperation with ISOC chapter, with ISOC SIG, or it is yep. aligned with one of the ISOC missions or Absolutely. mission objectives. Absolutely, yeah. and we would encourage people to work with our local chapters and, and to do that. Um, but this is really a broader, we're, you know, if you look at the big picture of how we defend the internet against all the threats and how we grow the internet to get it out to more people, our chapters are a wonderful, strong, vibrant community that are doing a lot of great work out there. And we have a number of, of funding programs, such as what Brian mentioned, the Beyond the Net funding program, that are specific for our chapters to go and do. And, and that's great, but our chapters, we only, you know, there's 130 of them, that, that they alone cannot defend the internet against all the threats that are out there and, and help grow it. So we need to help build an even wider movement beyond our chapters. And so that's really this work is to say, we, you know, we wanna help foster even more people because you know, in some places, if the government of, I don't know, um, Sweden, decides that they, they're they going to mandate backdoors into encryption, it's great if the Swedish, if the Sweden chapter of the Internet Society stands up there and talks. It would also be great if they have, you know, the Swedish network operators group standing up and speaking as well. And so we want to build that larger movement of, of the technical community who can be out there, you know, working with that in that space. So this program is really about that. You know, we would love it if people work with our chapters and help those chapters grow as well, too, which is also part of this as well. Any more? Oh, yes. And if you're at the Connecting the Unconnected conference, that's great. Please let people know this program's out there. Share the URL. We're glad to, uh, to help uh, fund groups in that kind of space. All right. Yeah, it was just right. Just just a session about funding of community networks or funding <laughs> of these network operators groups activities right today. <laughs> so this well, is this is one of very, very important instruments. Thank you. 
on that note, while you're there, we also have a separate program for funding um, community networks specifically, which is for, and I, we could get the URL and drop it in the chat, um, but we have that program. It's a separate program we have, which is, um, which is for, there we go. Brian has just dropped it in there, which is um, specifically, and it will be there to help fund, it, it is larger amounts, and it is there for a longer time frame to help go and fund equipment and other things that may be needed. I should mention, of course, we have another funding program as well, which is for uh, helping create um, internet exchange points, internet exchange points, IXPs, in given countries and areas. So we have that as well there. So we have three different funding programs to help in different ways to help grow the internet uh, infrastructure and people and communities in these different areas. Thank you for that excellent question and way for us to work that in there as well. So, all right, well, with that, um, you've seen the links here. I wanna say thank you. Oh, what? go ahead. Uh, if I can pop up one, one more again. Even if you have announced just these programs, I guess anybody that has any ideas with internet development can apply to you. And I, I always say it when I'm when I'm going to the events and activities with the community. Even if I cannot support you, our partners from ISOC, from ICANN, from ITU, and from other organizations can can support you, and we will share this information. I know that, uh, for example, I, I, I have been the, the founding director of Armenian Internet Exchange, and ISOC helped us much to establish this IXP and has also supported us to get engaged with the EURIX, and yep. it was very continuous and very good support with AM6, et etc. Without ISOC, we could not make this, I can say that definitely, or it will be, it will be very, very difficult. So, uh, I, I will just call people not to, to be concentrated on the programs that you have announced. Whenever they have the ideas, they should apply to you. They should apply to us, and we will find find the resources and partners for the, their their programs. We are always glad to help. Our our goal is to really to to build, promote, defend the internet in all the different ways it's there. I will also mention, you've heard us speak it, and Brian has it behind his head. We have the Internet Society Foundation is the entity that uh, that is our philanthropic entity that is providing this. We have a wide range of other grant programs as well that can provide research, that can provide large-scale uh, you know, emergency response, many different categories that are there. You can go to that website and find what is currently open and what programs are, are coming up and available in different ways. So with that, unless I have any final questions, um, we would just say uh, thank you all for coming. This will be recorded. We will send out a link. You can be able to share this with colleagues, with other people that's there. You, you can see in the chat, we've put several places, the link to the Sustainable Technical Communities Funding. We would encourage people to go and, and uh, apply, apply now. Um, let us you know, put some applications in there. We'd love to help you fund events and, and build technical communities all around so we can grow and defend the internet to keep this uh, amazing network of networks continuing to function. So with that, thank you all. Thank you for attending. And I look forward to seeing your applications. Thank you all for joining us. Take care. Thanks all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you all.